You know, right at this moment, I believe the Lord wants me to tell you, don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged, but don't be afraid. 1 John 4, 18, the word says that perfect love casts out fear. It drives fear out. So let's pray right now and believe that we receive God's perfect love. Heavenly Father, you are love, the Word of God tells us. And your perfect love drives out all fear and anxiety. And right now, Lord, we just invite you, your presence, your perfect love through Jesus, your perfect, beautiful Son, to drive out any fear, any anxiety in our lives right now, in our homes in our thinking, even in our sleep, Lord. Drive the fear out of us and replace it with your perfect love. In Jesus' precious name, amen. H2O Revival Part 5. Look, this series has been so groundbreaking and exciting that I believe the Lord wants us to go even a little deeper and get into Part 5, and this is called Streaming streaming, H2O Revival, streaming. This series is helping us to get real spiritual hydration into our lives. Basically, we've learned the powerful reaction of combining humility plus honor plus respect for God's order launches H2O Revival, which results in benefits, blessings, kingdom of God protection, and coverage in His amazing grace plan. Wow. Does that ever sound awesome? And that's why we're calling this session Streaming. H2O Revival results in streaming. Specifically, you may ask, streaming the goodness of God as it is in heaven here on earth. Streaming. You might be thinking, oh, Stephen, please don't go all high techy New World 5G on me. A grandmother, she was visiting a Starbucks for the very first time, and the barista said, well, can I have a name for the drink? The older lady, she, she thought for a second. She was a little bit taken back, and then she just, she just kind of surrendered, just kind of gave in. She goes, all right, call it Bob. <laughs> Look, I definitely don't want you confused on this topic of H2O Revival. We took the elements making up our spiritual atomic reaction of H2O revival based on God's principles. Let's revisit the partnership of these three atoms. When we put true humility, that's our first one, with real honor, our second one, reacting with Holy Spirit's order, that's our O atom, together in one person's life, what outcome, what result is there? Does it, what, what does it produce? Kingdom streaming. Kingdom of God streaming. Again, using an analogy with a simple essential substance. Water. Water is H2O. Two atoms of hydrogen, one atom of oxygen united to make the compound water. And without, without water, the world dies. Every living thing will perish. Can you imagine no lakes, rivers, oceans, ponds, or streams? Just dry, dead desert that looks much like the pictures that we've seen of Mars. That's this world without H2O. We judge the earth in that condition as needing a major H2O revival, wouldn't we? Now, move that analogy over to the spirit realm and see the reality of so many people. Can you see it? They're spiritually dehydrated, dry, and dead like the rocky planet Mars on the inside. God so loved his creation of humanity, he sent Jesus to save us all from this dehydrated, dead condition. We don't see hydrogen or oxygen, yet everyone believes in water. The virtues of humility, honor, and order aren't something to be seen, yet the force of these spiritual atoms is strong, mighty, significant. It's gargantuan and astronomical. For most of civilization, out of sight just means out of mind. So the humanitarian crisis intensifies, doesn't it? People perish from parched living, dehydrated with no spiritual H2O. Empty, thirsty people make fatal mistakes, do unthinkable things, and are desperate beyond words. Your empty is dangerous. Can I say that again? Your empty is dangerous. Now, 
Into our life walks Jesus, appealing to the thirst in all of us. John 7, starting at verse 37. Jesus stood and he cried in a loud voice, If any man, if any woman is thirsty, let them come to me and drink. He or she who believes in me, as the scripture has said, from their innermost being shall flow continuously springs and rivers of living water. But Jesus was speaking here of the spirit. He was talking spiritual realm. Jesus is the son of God and he came to deliver the true outcome of streaming. Yes, that's right. Jesus is the first person on earth to talk about streaming even before telephones or airplanes were even invented. Thousands of years before humanity discovered what the internet was or how information could travel through a cluster of glass fibers at the speed of light, Jesus launched streaming here on earth. Some like to stream their sports, financial nudes, the latest Prime or Netflix series. Maybe it's information for a report you're writing, or maybe you're accessing AI to write the report for you, right? Now, switch over to God's kingdom and his streaming service that's been operational for millions upon millions of years. When you've got access to H2O Revival in your life and you're streaming the kingdom of God benefits here on earth, well, you don't get too excited about AI. You've got access to OI. That's right, OI, which is original intelligence. That's the stuff that gets people healed. That's the stuff that gives you power over fallen angels, devils, tormenting thoughts, fears of the unknown, addictions, cravings, loneliness, despair. AI, AI don't, and it won't do any of that. No, no, no. AI can't touch or come even close to the power of OI. It's time to start streaming OI, original intelligence, and that's some serious H2O revival, my friend. Just imagine the Son of God, whom Scripture says in John 1, is the light and the life of all humanity. Here in John 7, we just read, Jesus launches the spiritual truth that he has the power to make you a streaming conductor of God's life here on earth. After all, Jesus didn't say out of your innermost being would flow a stream. He said, from your innermost being shall flow continuously springs, rivers, streams. Jesus, who is the light, promised a power of streaming coming out of you with multiple streams of life. That life shows up as direction, correction, instruction, encouragement, revelation, yes, information, operational guidance, prophetic words, and then words of knowledge, OI, original intelligence. Now, now don't get religiously goofy when I say prophetic. When you're truly streaming heaven's communication, of course, God will tell you things to come. Jesus said, this is the core of the precious Holy Spirit's ministry to us. It's in great part how the Lord comforts us. For example, imagine this. If you heard a prophetic word from the Holy Spirit that the price of wheat was going up a hundred times in the next calendar year, then you would pursue instruction from God on how to respond to that intel. That's serious, OI. You might buy futures on wheat. If you're in the world of agricultural, you would plant wheat instead of corn. If you knew a wheat farmer, you might not forget to buy him a birthday present this year, right? But seriously, the Lord would give you direction today to prepare for tomorrow. You'd somehow invest on God's intel. Much like Joseph in the book of Genesis, he built storehouses for grain to prepare for the times of famine. So he prospered tremendously in the midst of lack and hardship. You might even call it, oh, a recession or a depression. And the benefits of streaming God's intel wouldn't stop there either. Once you act on the OI that God has given you and time advances to catch up with the prophetic word, the virtual is now manifest reality and wheat is 100 times its initial value. This brings you to a time when according to how you've stewarded God's intel of streaming, 
you're, you're not only blessed yourself, but you are blessed to be a blessing. Say that with me. I'm blessed to be a blessing. This is why Jesus' words in John 7 were given to you and me. The Lord not only wants to bless you as a child of Almighty God, because that's who you were always designed to be, right? But he also wants you to be blessed to be a blessing. We all need this ability to be streaming life. See, now you're beginning to see the full effect of it. H2O revival is for you, but not all about you. You have people that you love, family, friends, even strangers that God wants you to influence. That's right. Every one of us is called and assigned by God to be streaming life, goodness, secrets, revelation, answers, healings, joy, peace, love, as it is in heaven here on earth. Not from our own goodness or determination or self-sacrifice. Oh, I know that sounds so noble for you to be this self-sacrificing martyr. But remember, Romans 3 says, we have nothing good or righteous or truthful in ourselves that is originated in ourselves. We need that H2O revival from heaven so that we can stream God's life to others. Why do you think people so easily get hooked on certain apps, video games, swiping left, basically just streaming? Why? In all of us is the desire to stream life. Why do many people fall in the trap of old-fashioned gossip on social media? Why are all these apps from foreign entities such a snare to society? People want flow. People want flow. And if it's not streams of OI, we settle for AI. We're hungry and thirsty for new information, maybe confirmation of our opinions and thoughts. We want to feel like we've been heard, on target, going the right way, not as bad as the accusing voices on the inside tell us that we really are. Sadly, many people live under condemnation, isolated, isolated from their true identity. Spiritual dehydration makes a person vulnerable to deception and turns their heart against them. That's right. The devil can deceive you to make your own heart your worst enemy. It's like when a person's immune system turns against them physically. That's called autoimmune disease. When your heart condemns you, it replays over and over and over all your mistakes, your sins, and your failures. So the antidote seems to be a desperate desire to shut off or even destroy your heart. That's the worst thing you can do. That's why many, many people become suicidal. The heart is designed to respond to God. If it takes direction from the devil, it's going to get ugly. So many precious lives are hijacked by addiction, mental illness, despair, hopelessness. It's not a lack of talent, strength, or intelligence. It's a matter of the heart. Wealth, power, fame, and talent have never, ever been able to compensate for our heart without streaming. Without streaming Jesus, the, the one that Jesus offers. Every heart must stream life. Otherwise, the outcome is deadly. Think about King Nebuchadnezzar around the year 600 BC. In the book of Daniel, he lost his mind for seven years without God. Caligula. The emperor of Rome famously outdid even his nephew Nero for being cruel and insanely violent, wicked, a terror to humanity. King Henry VI of England, he spent decades mentally ill and then with religion making him even worse. Ivan the Terrible, the first czar of Russia, he enjoyed torturing people, even killing his own son. Then there's the famous, talented author, Virginia Woolf. She took her own life at 59 after battling depression for so long. The brilliant musical genius of Beethoven couldn't save him from despair and alcoholism. Van Gogh, one of the most celebrated, popular artists of the world today, once cut his own ear off in a psychological episode and in 1890 took his own life. How sad. The literary career and success of the influential author, Ernest Hemingway, it wasn't enough to save him from himself. No matter how talented, rich, famous, or strong people are, without life streaming from their heart, they're done before they start, dying of a deep spiritual dehydration 
and thirst. Your innermost being is where Jesus breaks forth with his streaming of life for you, through you, from your heart. Jesus saves your heart, then he heals your heart, then he opens up the well of your heart with streams of living water. That's why the isolation of condemnation is debilitating and deadly. 1 John chapter 3, starting at verse 20. Whenever our hearts in tormenting self-accusation make us feel guilty and condemn us, for he is above and greater than our consciences, our hearts, and he knows everything. And beloved, if our consciences, our hearts do not accuse us, if they do not make us feel guilty and condemn us, we have confidence before God and we receive from him whatever we ask because we obey his orders, observe his suggestions and injunctions, follow his plan for us and practice what is pleasing to God. Notice it's legal talk. It's all legal talk. It's not religious talk, but legal judicial. It's OI talk, original intelligence. This is essential to the flow, the streaming of life God wants to bring up and out of your heart. Condemnation is incompatible with your design. It's this big, ugly, big, boulder blocking, censoring the spring of life coming through your heart. If you allow accusations to dominate your heart, you censor the streams of heaven God has ordained to flow out of you. We enjoy the promises of God by the grace of God. It's not by your merit or good works that the flow of life comes up in you. It's the loving kindness of God, his mercy and his grace. Jesus did the work. Now you might say to me, well, I've tried religion before and it didn't work. Well, then I'd say to you, God's word says religion and traditions don't work. This heavenly streaming is about results, outcome, buying wheat for a penny and selling it for a dollar. Praying is empty form and ritual if you don't have God's streaming going on in your heart. H2O revival. Senator John Kennedy, that wordsmith from the great state of Louisiana, once said this, gravity has a way of bruising people that don't respect it. I like that. So let me say it again. Praying is only form and ritual if you don't have God's life streaming through your heart. I personally don't have time for doing religious stuff. It's a time waster. It doesn't please God and it doesn't get heavenly results. How's that for gravity, right? It's time for a H2O revival and we get these streaming waters of life flowing today. Why wait? God's word is for right now, and he is 100% the God that will answer when we call on him. Jesus cried with a loud voice and said, come to me and drink. If you're coming to Jesus and you're getting a drink, what do you think that is? It's truth. H2O truth. He is the truth and he is the way and he is the life. You're initiating a heavenly well of truth, direction, life coming up on the inside of you. How's that for a drink? Jesus told the woman at the well, I'll give you a drink of water where you'll never, ever thirst again. Now that's hydration. Let's do this. Let's bring our H2O atoms together for streaming life. Because that's the goal, right? The outcome or end product of two atoms of hydrogen, and one atom of oxygen is H2O, water. You can't have a stream without water. So let's apply that to our spiritual combination of H2O revival. Humility plus honor plus order. What, what's the result? What, what of heaven do we begin to stream here on earth? You see, this is a crucial question to ask because otherwise we, we default to religious ritual with no expectations on God. And my friend, you need to know this. That does not please Almighty God ever. There's never a day that pleases God. Hebrews 11, verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, that's number one, and that he is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Look, we can't please God if we're without faith in God. Listen to what the word says again. We must believe that God exists. That's part one. And also believe that he's a rewarder. That's part two. That means the outcome specialist. That's who God is. He's the rewarder, the producer, the outcome person of all eternity. His promises are sure. Oh, let me read this to you. Romans 4, 16. 
Therefore, inheriting the promise depends entirely on what? Faith, in order that it may be given as an act of grace, his unmerited favor and mercy, so that the promise will be legally guaranteed to all the descendants, the children of God. Did you hear some of those words in the context of talking about faith in God? It's inheriting the promise. And God's word says it depends entirely on faith, not performance, but faith. Then it said, in order that it may be given as an act of grace. That means receiving the outcome is not dependent on our merit or works, but belief in God's unmerited favor and mercy. That's wonderful. That's amazing. That's amazing grace. That's why we sing amazing grace. How sweet the sound, because it is sweet. So back to our question regarding H2O revival. Humility plus honor plus order. What kind of heavenly outcome do we get here on earth? After all, Jesus told us to pray, God, your kingdom come, your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. Outcome here on earth. Well, Proverbs 22, verse 4 says, With humility and the fear of the Lord come riches and honor and life. Now, that doesn't sound too bad, does it? In fact, it sounds really good. I actually have a whole chapter on this subject in my book called 31 Ways to Your Best Days. I go a little deeper on it. Just look at what happens as we combine humility with honor, or as it says in Proverbs, the fear of the Lord, that's honoring God, which it's reverential honor of God. And then the other element or principle understood here is order. The interesting thing about this thing called the fear of the Lord is that it's recognition of God's identity, his supply, his provision, his protection, his order. All of this points to God's order for life. You can't be in reverential awe of God without being conscious of his mandates for order. The key thing that I want to point you in the direction of is the outcome, the fruit on the tree, the manifest reality of a reaction of humility plus honor plus order. It equals riches, honor, and life. In my book, 31 Ways to Your Best Days, I call it the RHL factor, riches, honor, and life. Oh, how convicting it was for me the day I had a conversation with God the Father about this, but it led to correction and instruction for a complete life change that I was thirsty for. I was so thirsty. Here's kind of how that conversation with God went for me. Stephen, do you see the RHL factor in your life? No, sir, I don't. God said, well, am I failing to keep my promises or generate outcome? Do you accuse me of lying, failing, or neglecting you? No, sir. Lord, I know you never fail. Well, then the room goes really quiet for me. It's my turn to think, to realize that I failed. I had to come to the conclusion that I failed on humility. I failed to activate the honor key. I ignored God's kingdom order. There's no spiritual reaction in my life because the spiritual elements for H2O were not. I said, were not activated. So his heavenly benefits were not streaming into my life here on earth. God was giving, but I wasn't receiving. The mistake is to think that God's grace guarantees outcome in your life. You know, the streaming into your life of all of his benefits. No. God's grace guarantees access to his works, but receiving the heavenly streaming is activated with humility plus honor plus order. His grace even helps you work these virtues. God gives us instruction to use humility plus honor plus order. And at the same time, it's our choice. You don't have to do that. You can say, ah, I don't want to work those elements. I'm just not interested. God will not force you to accept or to use these spiritual atoms in your life. You say no, it's no. You don't have to stream God's benefits. You have full autonomy over your belief system. That's why places like North Korea, China, and Iran continue to fail with people who have a deep faith in Almighty God. Aren't you ready for outcomes? Revival is not revival without outcomes. Heavenly outcomes here on earth. Revival starts with you and with me. Jesus said it would flow out of your innermost being. If it doesn't touch your being, your identity, then it's not H2O revival Jesus gives. Are you streaming life, my friend? Because we all need to be. 
We're all made to be streaming rivers of life from heaven by Jesus' authority into our earthly reality. Without this streaming, any believer in Christ is a total contradiction. You might say, Stephen, that's me. I'm a contradiction. I say I believe on Jesus, but then I, I have no sign of streaming heavenly outcomes in my life. Well, if that is you, don't give up. Don't feel condemned or discouraged, but own it. Repent and receive your H2O revival. Don't lament, repent. That was Jesus' first sermon here on earth. He said to everybody, change your way of thinking. Understand that God's governance is not a democracy, it's kingdom. In God's kingdom, here's what we do. Number one, we humble ourselves. Number two, we honor God. And number three, we align with God's order. Simple, easy. H2O revival, easy. The big challenge is surrendering our thinking from I get to vote and tell God my opinion to I fully submit to the King of Kings, Jesus. Humility plus honor plus order equals H2O revival. Life, now you're streaming. Humility plus honor plus order, H2O revival. This is so simple, it takes religion to complicate and confuse the truth of it. Let me say it just one more time. Number one, humility. It's receiving God's governance. Number two, honor. It's esteeming and weighing respect for the king of God's kingdom. And number three, order. It's recognizing the legislation, the precepts of God's kingdom here on earth. Jesus summarized these three atoms of truth by simply saying this, seek first the kingdom of God. When you put humility with honor, with God's order, you experience the reality of heavenly streaming here on earth. Prayer is no longer religious, and it becomes a royal petition that gets addressed in the court of God's justice and grace. It gets God's attention. That's right. Now that's powerful. That's H2O revival in a barren land, streams in a desert, rivers of healing in a world of sickness and disease. Praise God. That's as it is in heaven being done here on earth. Let's you and I speak the eternal word of God. Let's pray it. Father God, we pray that your kingdom come here on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus taught us to pray this way. Yes, to say this day, forgive us for being ignorant of your blessings and grace. It kept us in the dark on what we were allowed to ask for. It's kept us from spiritually authoring the exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask or think. Instead of using Jesus' authority to pray for your best, Father God, we've given birth to our doubts with words that only invalidate and frustrate your good plans for us. Today, we authorize the rivers of your life according to your word, Lord. Be it unto us according to your word. May the John 7 principle of life Jesus promised be alive and well in each one of us. H2O revival is our reality today and streaming on demand with life and more abundant life all in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Thank you for sharing this very important time with us. Get our free app with the daily prayer and join us for this Tuesday Talks for an exciting, interactive question and answer and prayer time where we talk about what's important to you. At Living Room Church, you are loved. And together, we live life strong.